off tap, aka cross effects, aka chosen effect, back on the deck, getting ready to wreck the set, and don't you forget. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Always a pleasure to be rocking along with all you beautiful people around the globe family. What's going on? What you talking about, Lou? What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Always a pleasure to be kicking down not your beautiful souls around the globe. If it's your first time, consider subscribing, join the family. We'd love to have you. All right, look, another reaction request. This one is from Gary H. And he wants to hear Mike Oldfield, Tubular Bells, part one. Uh, this is what he had to say. He said, 1972 is a special year in music. Some of the greatest albums of all time were published that year. Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, David Bowie, The Who, Stevie Wonder, Iggy Pop, Elton John, Leonard Skinner, Marvin Gaye, Bob Marley, Wings, Roxy Music, Paul Simon, Lou Reed, Bruce Springsteen, Allman Brothers, Black Sabbath, King Crimson, Tom Waits, Eagles, Queen, Jethro Tull, brought out amazing stuff and many many more also in 1973 tubular bells by mike oldfield came out it was the first album to be published from virgin records mike oldfield was 20 years old in 1973 so he probably wrote it while still in his teens almost all instruments on tubular bells were played and recorded by oldfield himself tubular bells is one of the most influential progressive rock music pieces of all time if anybody wonders where they know the music from, also in 1973, the movie The Exorcist came out. Tubular Bells was used as film score there. Wow, that is a lot of information, and that is super freaking awesome. Got me very excited for this. So without further ado, for me, Gary H, and all of you, let's dive in and get off tap. That happened very fast. I freaking, from the moment that first started, I know this song. I know this song. Freaking, I know it. Freaking, oh my gosh. I, I freaking know this song. Wow. Thank you. 
masterpiece. Like, this is just so epic. Like, it's all planned so well. It's just all progressing in such a cool and obvious, like, just masterful way. Like, I, I love this song. I absolutely know it. I can't believe I know it. But I do know it. And it's shocking to me that I actually know this. Because this is grand. This is a epic piece, man. Like, what a... This is an awesome reaction request. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, even though I know this song, I don't think I've ever heard this all the way through, like all this in its entirety. I think it's just that first part that it's very familiar. Obviously, it could even be just because of that movie, The Exorcist. But, you know, that whole first section, yeah, I know. Now it's starting to get a bit like, okay, I don't know what's coming up, but yeah, okay, that's probably what it is. I, I probably know the iconic part, which probably a lot of people do. Because also, I think this was also used, sampled in uh, some dance tracks. You know, some, um, like, more hardcore progressive stuff, man. Like, I think I've heard this sampled in there as well. Definitely some Mike Oldfield remixes of this out there. Yeah, I don't know any of this part now, so maybe I don't really know it.
dope. I like it. It's just like a like a a, a, a big like kind of ensemble of various different obvious sounds and stuff but just like even just styles of music like that sounded almost a little bit um traditional kind of japanese style influences in there and then you hear like the guitar with the more of the rock style like there's just everything happening in this like this is like if a orchestra was like just broken down into all these different parts and this guy is playing all those parts which is surreal and super dope i love it let's go reminds me of uh, the story with Queen and uh, when they had the song that was like super long um, I think it was Bohemian Rhapsody and they were like yo this is too long for radio like we can't play this this is not commercial we can't freaking make this work the manager dude or the record label dude whichever one of those dudes forget exactly which one but they're like no we don't like this song you know we, it's too long it's too long and now he goes, like, imagine coming with this song and being like, yo, hey, I got this great song. It goes for like freaking like 26 minutes. I think it'd be fantastic. <laughs> They'd have been like, huh? We need the super mega duper radio edit. <laughs>
those chord changes are nuts dude i love that that is so awesome freaking this is bomb man let's go
just so in case you guys know what's going on, I I have dinner cooking at the same time as doing this. I was like, oh, I'll just put my dinner on. So, you know, while I'm doing this, that's cooking in the background because I'm starving, haven't eaten anything all day. And uh, yeah, I didn't want my vegetables to burn because no one likes burnt vegetables. You know, that's all. I just, just in case y'all was wondering, I suddenly pick up a frying pan lid. <laughs> of songs you could definitely get really lost in like you could really just find yourself just really floating away in a meditative state as uh gary had mentioned it's like a very meditative type of song you know when he was saying talking about it um <clears throat> you know there's so many like just positives to this experience and i i'm actually just enjoying this is one of those type of songs though like i think you you'd need to listen to like five 10 20 times to really capture everything that's going on it it's just so much happening man it's so dope
What a fantastic journey. You know, there's certain times when you hear something and you go, wow, you know, you can tell that they put the time and the effort into making sure that it was something memorable, something epic. And they wanted to leave their mark on the whole freaking music industry, the mark on the planet. They want to say that I've been here, that I've been here, that I existed. Like this is that kind of song. This is so cool because it tells a very profound story and it just starts from 
one place and it takes you through this journey, this whole story until you get to the end. It starts again with that simplistic nature of it, but it's kind of taking you from a kind of more, you know, and I'm only saying dark just because of the exorcist component, <laughs> but it takes you from there. And in the end, it's like, it's if, if you started this song during a thunderstorm, you ended up with the sun shining bright at the end to kind of think about that trajectory. But through it all, there was all these nice peaks and valleys and all these different components that actually just gave you something really special especially when you know that it's one guy that did this whole thing like knowing there's one guy <coughs> sorry guys that's that just was able to create this masterpiece it was super cool and as an artist and a musician a producer as songwriter as all those things myself I have mad respect for things like this because this is going and thinking about something outside of the box that you can do not being like everyone else, but just doing your own thing. Like I said, putting your own signature, your own mark on the music that exists, especially at that time. You know, like, you you know, when I was reading off all those group names early on, you heard me say there were so many names uh, that Gary had written there. And, you know, all those names and stuff, <coughs> you know, are really representative of fantastic era of music that existed then, like an, an amazing and brilliant time of music so when you find yourself listening to all these incredible artists that were putting out jams and hits and epic masterpieces of their own to be able to put out something that actually was like just completely outside of all those other things in a period of greatness something that you were able to put your own stamp on and like just absolutely leave such a profound and significant impact on music like that is incredible especially again during one of the most competitive and brilliant times of music ever i like how at the end there it also i really love how it, it's like you ever see when you go and you watch a concert or show or something and they've got all the different uh people on the drums on the guitar, on the blah, on the this, and they introduce all the characters, the players in the performance. I love this because he's done that, but it's all basically him saying, look, these are all the instruments. I'm going to introduce you to them in case you didn't know what you were hearing. You're just like, what is this? And then finally, the last one, of course, the star of the show, the tubular bells. Like, bro, like, come on. Like, that is so well done, and that's just a nice another little touch to something so epic, a great way to tell a story, a great way to take your audience on a journey, your listeners on a freaking audible experience, second to none. Now, I started out and I was like, yeah, I know this song, I've heard this before, but realistically, I didn't, I didn't know this song, man. Like, I only knew that little riff, that epic melody, you know, the exorcist thing, that's all I really knew, and I've never heard this all the way through like that so i was mistaken because knowing just only that exorcist part does not even begin to just allow the experience that is this entire song like this is epic beyond epic and this is what real amazing song composition looks like when you've got all these different parts like to sit down and to formulate all these different parts is incredible. I wonder though if this was him actually writing down and saying, okay, this is how I'm gonna do this and, and write down the whole performance. Or was it more of a freestyle session where it was like, kind of like feels to me like almost, it could have been a jam session with himself. I've been in situations where I've been with other musicians and artists and things and we have a jam session and everyone just kind of comes together and creates masterpieces like this in the spur of the moment. I wonder if this was him just there in the moment being like, dude, I'm going to make something super epic and I'm going to do all the instruments, play all the parts myself. I'm going to make something that no one will ever forget. I wonder if that was the case, man. Like, you know, I'm sure there's a story. I'm sure there's something significant and everything. And uh, I know you guys will probably tell me in the comments. But guys, this is a piece for someone who appreciates and enjoys music appreciates and enjoys real music appreciate and enjoys not just a a song with one or two or four 
different instruments, but someone who's taken the time to take you on a journey through sound. It's like a sound journey, like, hello. Let me introduce you, like, this is what you should do, if, like, if we ever have aliens, they want to get a crash course on different instruments we have on this planet, say, yo, tubular bells, put that on for them. that will give them a crash course. We got everything on there for them. <laughs> But bravo, dude. I love this. Great performance. Great song. Perfectly executed. Masterful playing. Masterful interpretation of a piece that he's created. And only thing you can do is just applaud it and go back later and listen to it time and time again to really appreciate all the little nooks and crannies that have been thrown into this masterful, epic, majestically, amazingly beautiful piece of music so thank you gary h what a fantastic reaction quest thank all you guys for tuning in if you want to share a playlist of your life something that you enjoy something magical like this head over to offtap.life i got you covered we'll make it happen but in the meantime as always remember to more to the fullest keep it off tap i've got dinner so i'm out Of our lives, dancing in the pool.